So let's talk about a little bit about what this data reveals to us today. What does it mean? Well, it shows when we step back, yes, there was a 31,000 decline, but remember, we're a very large economy, um, over 19 million Canadians employed, self-employed and working for employers. Um, so 31,000 is really not you know, significant, I don't think. The larger story is that this is still remarkably low numbers. I mean, I grew up in the 70s and 80s when 8 and 9 percent unemployment was normal. Mm -hmm. And here we are talking about 4.9. I mean, these are numbers we haven't seen since, the, I think, the 1960s. And and so it shows that the economy is, is very strong, very robust. And one more quick point, Jennifer, mm -hmm. buried down almost in the footnotes of their release today, they, uh, StatsCan noted that wages increased by 5.2%. Now that's still below the inflation rate as we all know, but that's way above what was only two years ago when wages were running at 1%, 1.5%. 1 wow. So this is what's concerning, wow. of course, the Bank of Canada. And I was gonna say many sectors uh, were freezing wage increases, but now they really don't have a choice except to offer higher wages because of that inflation rate, right, Professor? You're, you're absolutely right. And and this problem is going to endure because this is not a COVID problem, as some may think. COVID made it manifest and made it more explicit, made it more visible, the job shortage problem. But this is an enduring problem that's going to go out for every forecaster that has looked at this, including StatsCan, suggests this is a very long-term problem because of the collapse of the birth rate in Canada, um, which produced the boomers back in the 50s. I'm one of them. When the birth rate was four, children per family. Now it's down to 1.4, which is well below break even. And the only growth is now coming from immigration, according to StatsCan. These job shortages are going to endure, and that's going to push wages up, which is going to exacerbate inflation. So that is fascinating because you're absolutely right. You know, we hear about the great resignation that seemed to take place over COVID, but it's not just that. There's just not enough bodies in Canada to fill those empty spaces. Jennifer, you're absolutely right. The way I put it to my students, and they get a real kick out of this, I say, because they understand what I'm saying, I tell them, there's too many of me, and there's not enough of you, <laughs> which <laughs> captures it very colorfully. We need more young people. We don't need more boomers. We need more young people. We need boomers to stay in the workforce because there's just general shortages, period. But we need more immigration. We need more young people, and we need more people to remain in the workforce. When you talk about, though, um, people boomers as it were and I'm, I'm not yet quite a, a boomer well I won't be a boomer but I, I think I'm a millennial uh, anyway regardless or no I'm Jen something regardless Jen, professor yeah. thank you yeah um, people are living longer and wanting to work longer so but there's still yeah. not enough of, of, of boomers who want to stay in the workforce you're absolutely right. Oh, there, we're down to about one third of the boomers are still in the workforce. Two thirds have left. So one, I'm one of them. I'm I'm still in the workforce. I'm not mm -hmm. retiring. Uh, so about a third of us are still left. But we're going out the door by the thousands every week. And it's forecast. StatsCan, I believe, has a forecast, but I've seen it elsewhere. Anyways, that within five years most of the boomers will have left the workforce. So we're in 2022. So by 2027, the boomers will be mostly gone. And and the uh, and we do need immigration. But the problem is, is it takes time to bring uh, immigrants in and then recognize their credentials, integrate them into the workforce. And so we're going to have to look at other solutions as well to augment immigration. More automation, for example, uh, bring in uh, non-traditional people into the workforce, uh, people that are, uh, you know, that uh, are disabled people uh, with disabilities. So we're going to have to become more uh, creative. And most importantly, we're going to have to do a better job recognizing more rapidly the credentials of foreign workers coming to Canada, whether they be nurses or doctors or engineers. And that's what we're hearing from the Nurses Union uh, expected later today. Ian Lee, Associate Professor at the Sprott School of Business and Certified Boomer. Good to see you this morning. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Jennifer.